Hello, everybody. Welcome to Zone Defense. We talk all things NBA and NFL. Be sure to follow us on Spotify at Zone Defense Podcast, on Twitter at Zone Defense Pod, and hit that subscribe button down below because it really helps out our channel a lot. Also, let us know who is your must-draft fantasy football player for 2021. They will each be breaking down our favorite and least favorite fantasy football players for the 2021 season. How's it going, guys? I'm good, Drew. I'm excited to get back into some more fantasy content on the channel. Um, the tier lists were pretty fun, but I think we're going to have a good time today, too. Yeah, definitely, uh, Drew. I'm, I'm really excited for this one as well. Uh, you know, one of my – we did this – I believe me and you did this video last year, and yep. and that was a lot of fun, man. I, it was one of my favorite videos of the year, but I'm pretty sure I said Le'Veon Bell was one of my favorite players last year. And obviously, I mean, the, the guy is one had one foot in the retirement home by the end of the year. So, you know, hopefully I can call, come up with some better calls this year. And, yeah. and, and I'll, uh, I'll kick it off with – one of my favorite running backs as, you know, one of my favorite players to watch this year, a guy that I've talked about at, you know, at nauseum with you guys so far this year, it's Austin Eckler for me. One of my favorite players going into the season, you know, he's, he's kind of being profiled around that, you know, low end RB one ish, you know, like second round, early second, mid second round. I think he is being criminally undervalued in the draft. Personally, I think Austin Eckler, this season is going to be a top five running back in, the, in fantasy football and full PPR leagues. I think this guy is going to catch an absolute, just, just so many passes. I think he's going to get over a hundred targets. And if he gets that kind of volume plus, you know, 200, you know, 180 carries around there with, with maybe some, hopefully some more goal line work. Cause that, that's the one area that he's probably going to need to get into the top five. I think he is, one of the safer picks you can make in the back end of the first round. Personally, I would be willing to take him as high as, you know, five or six, maybe even, I mean, I think I like him more than, I mean, Nick Chubb, Joe Mixon, all those, you know, Jonathan Taylor, uh, Cam Akers, any of those second year running backs for sure. I like him more than Najee Harris. Um, I mean, there's even an argument, you know, I think he's right in the discussion with like a, a Saquon Barkley for me, to be honest, you know, at that, I might even take him, and this this is maybe a little bit surprising. I think I would take him over Alvin Kamara this year. I think Kamara, with all the question marks with that offense, they they who knows who the quarterback's going to be. Uh, you know, I think he's going to run into some inconsistencies this year. Eckler's in a up and coming offense with one of the best quarter, one of the best young quarterbacks in the league. He's got good receivers around him. They finally built this offensive line to be something that actually can work. I think. I actually think I would definitely take Eckler over Kamara personally, even though, you know, you you have the track record of Kamara, but at the same time, he really wasn't the same player when Taysom Hill was in. And honestly, I'm I'm not even sure if – I don't know if Winston or Hill is going to start, but I really think that is going to make a difference in his game. So I, I think that's how Eckler sneaks into my top five. Personally, I think he's going to – I think he has the upside to be – and I'm not saying he's going to be, but I think he has the upside to potentially even finish as the RB1. It's very low likelihood of that happening, but with the, with the fact that he gets a ton of pass volume, with the fact that I think he's going to get some more touchdowns this year with that offensive line improving and they really don't have a lot of competition for him, I think this guy is going to be an absolute superstar for fantasy this year. And I know, Roman, you know, I saw you shaking your head a little bit. You don't, it doesn't seem like you agree with me about the Camara thing. I'd like to hear why first. Well, it's not just about Camara. And I will say, I agree with you in the sense that he's criminally underrated. I mean, we definitely talked about that during our tier list that, you know, he's definitely undervalued. And yes, he will probably be very good this year. Um, saying he's going to be a top five running back, maybe even the, I know you weren't uh, positive on him being RB1, but him being at least better than Camara. I personally don't see it. I'll, I can understand your points for it, um, but I'm not willing to go that far in saying he's going to be a top five running back this year. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm that bullish on him either, Chris, but I do really like Eckler. And the funny thing is when I was going through my favorites and least favorites um, before the show, I thought about putting Eckler down, but I was like, nah, Chris is probably going to bring him up. And here we are. <laughs> you brought him up. Um, because I think, I mean, I think definitely Aaron Jones, I think, is a guy who I think is probably going to go ahead of Eckler in many uh, drafts. I think personally I'd probably want Eckler over Jones. Much rather have Eckler. A lot of the uncertainty over um, in Green Bay. Even a guy like Nick Chubb, even some guy like Jonathan Taylor has been going really high in a yeah. lot of different drafts. I definitely want Eckler over him. Um, even again, this might be this might be surprising, but maybe even Derrick Henry because like they're possibly going to throw, throw the ball more. 
Henry obviously is not super involved in the passing game. There might be unless Julio or AJ or maybe both of them go down, then they're probably going to run the ball more. But there's a chance. And also, Derek's got a lot of miles on those legs here these last couple of years. He's due for a fall off. Um, you mentioned, though, some bad takes from our last year's least favorites and, favorites and least favorites. My big least favorite, I remember, was Derek Henry, and he proved me wrong. So he's probably going to prove me wrong again. Um, but yeah, I, I love Eckler. I think he's, um, I think it's true of, of any running back, as we saw in our tier list, injuries are a concern with him, but that's, that's just, yeah, that's right. just the way it is with running backs. Um, but yeah, if full year with Justin Herbert, new offense, um, even though I think Anthony Lynn had a nice offense there in, with the Chargers, um, but it's still a new offense. Hopefully that can maybe give him some juice and I think he's going to gonna have a really big year. So yeah, I don't, I don't hate it at all. I, I, I like it. Um, and I'm not going to dive too much into the Alvin Kamara hate, um, at least right now. Yeah, I, I'll get into just one, you know, one more point, and I'll let I'll let Roman go ahead and finish his. I, I like what you're saying, Drew, about you know Jonathan Taylor. I don't really get why he's being drafted ahead of Eckler when you know he was absolutely brutal for you know 60, 70 percent of the year, and at the end of the year they have a soft schedule and they they start giving him the ball more, which there was definitely a change in usage there, but. I mean, he, he really didn't look that good for a lot of the year. They, they brought in a new quarterback, Carson Wentz, who doesn't check the ball down to his running backs very much. Like I said, this is a full PPR league as well. So Eckler obviously is one gets one of the biggest boosts out of any running back yeah, because of the full sure. PPR. So, you know, you, you have Taylor probably not going to catch very many passes. You're going to need him to score a bunch of touchdowns. And and I'm not really in on that, man. I just – I it, there's a lot of moving pieces to that offense where I'd much rather have a guy on the better offense with a better quarterback, uh, you know, uh, an up-and-coming offensive line, better weapons around him, uh, just a better team in general. Honestly, I, I project the Chargers to be really good this year. So I think that he's going to be on a team that scores a lot of points, whereas, you know, a guy like – Jonathan Taylor, I'm not sure yet. A guy like Alvin Kamara, I'm also not sure if they're going to score a lot of points because they have a new quarterback and they weren't that good of an offense last year. And he also got every single touchdown last year and Michael Thomas was also hurt. So there's a lot of moving pieces to where Kamara is not going to score 18 touchdowns again this year. And I don't think he's going to catch as many passes. So I, I mean, him, Henry's like another good one because he has to score, you know, 20 touchdowns probably to to be better than Eckler unless Eckler gets injured in a full PPR. So I, I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of those, you know, back end top five running backs that I could absolutely see falling out, you know, around 10 ish and, and Kamara proved he could be around there. Cause I mean, before last season, he was like the RB 10 and he was drafted to be like the RB three. So I think, I think there's room there for Eckler to sneak into the back end of the top five. And he's got upside for even more in my opinion. Yeah, regardless of how high or how low he goes, I think he'll guarantee be a steal at least. Uh, that's all I'll say. Whether he finishes top 10 or top 5, I think there will, you will see some running backs go ahead of him that may not be deserving to. But like you said, Chris, I mean, you're all in. Um, I can understand oh, yeah. why, and he's certainly underrated. Um, so he might be able to pan out, but even if he doesn't like live up to the standards you're setting for him, I do think he'll be you know, a win-win no matter where you draft him. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that for sure. Why don't you uh, jump into your first name, Roman? Yeah, when you said that you project the uh, Chargers to be really good this year, that's kind of why I put this player on, on my list. Uh, Keen Allen, last year, I had my fair share of doubts of him going into the season. Um, maybe that was just because of the Phil Rivers effect when he was playing the past few years with him. But he absolutely showed out with Justin Herbert as his quarterback. Uh, came on strong down the stretch, a player that I traded for in my leagues because um, it seemed like every game he was getting a touchdown. He finished the year just shy of a thousand yards and only eight touchdowns. However, I think he can do much more than that. Um, obviously, uh, Herbert going into year two will be much more refined. Um, the loss of Hunter Henry, I think, will you know contribute to him getting some more targets. Um, so I do think he can be a lot better than what he showed out last year, and I think he was just as impressive um, during the last year's stretch. So I can only assume he'll get a lot better. Um, the only concern I really have with the charge as a whole is just the new coaching staff that they have and the new offensive scheme that they might run. So that might, you know, I guess maybe hurt the whole team. But I think once they figure it out, which I assume they might have already, um, I, don't, I think Keen Allen will be a lock as a top 10 wide receiver, top 10 or uh, double the touchdowns, a thousand yards. I think that's all you can mark it up as a guarantee for me. Yeah, right now, uh, Keenan Allen, I'm looking on the sleeper app right now. Keenan Allen right now is the wide receiver 10 in terms of ADPs being drafted with the third in the third round around the fourth pick if you're in a 10-team league, full PPR. So I also like Keenan Allen. Similarly to 
Austin Eckler, I think he is very safe where he's at. I think he's being undervalued with this really good offense. And then I think that he's got a lot of upside as well, similarly to Austin Eckler. I think, like Roman said, you know, even if Eckler doesn't reach the standards that I think he's going to, I think he's going to be a top 10 running back. I think the same thing about Keenan Allen. I think he has the upside to be top five for sure because he was very good last year with uh, Herbert, and I think Herbert will be even better this year. And then, but even if not, you know, you're still getting him at the wide receiver 10. So if you draft him, around that range in you know, a wide receiver 10 to wide receiver 12 ish, you're still getting a pretty good player. And then I think one of the most shocking stats from last season is that Keenan Allen somehow did not finish with the thousand yards last year. I mm-hmm. don't know how that happened. I have absolutely no idea how that happened when he played. I mean, he played in 14 games and it felt like he had, you know, a thousand five hundred yards to me. I thought I felt like every game he was getting 150, but he just somehow did not have a thousand yards. So that well, I- a very shocking stat for me. I guess also I we have to consider that there will be a 17th game, so he absolutely should be over a thousand yards. I think a lot of wide receivers in general will do. Yeah. Will put up a lot of career numbers um, just because the extra game. So we gotta take that with a grain of salt. However, <laughs> Keenan Allen will you know be up there with the highest reception yards in the league. I, I can guarantee that. Yeah, I know this is a guy. At least for me, um, I always think he's very injury prone. Um, but really, since 2017, he's played uh, outside of last year. He missed two games, but 2017, 2018, 2019, he played all 16 games. Um, like Chris said, he didn't have a thousand yards last year, but he was pretty close. He had 992, and then he had over a thousand yards, 17, 18, and 19, um, over 100 receptions in all those years except one of them. And that one year, he had 97, so pretty close. So yeah, he's he's a little bit older, um, so it is a little mm-hmm. bit concerning. Um, there but he's still only 29 he's still in the prime of his career um and the fact uh, my rebuttal to your saying he's a favorite is because of the injury concerns but i guess i just proved myself wrong because he really isn't (laughs) as injured as i think at least i know i think he is and i think a lot of people think he is because he was banged up there for i think back to back yeah back to back years 15 16 he played eight games 15 one game in 16 i think that's we all kind of collectively put those blinders on but he's been really healthy the last um four years and um, yeah, he didn't have Justin Herbert for the start of last year either. He had Tyrod Taylor. So um, the fact he's going to have a full season with Herbert, as long as Herbert can avoid that sophomore slump, um, he should be a really good, yeah. really good player. And Chris, like you said too, he's he's going in the ten to fifteen range, um, at least in in the uh, the rankings I'm looking at right now. He's going around guys like Cooper Cup, like Robert Woods, like Tyler Lockett, like Amari Cooper. Um, and I would think I, I personally think I would want um, Keenan Allen over really any of those guys. Yeah, maybe outside of Cooper, but I think uh, no, not he's right close. in that, he's right in that range. Um, so yeah, so I think uh, really really good favorite there. I really like him as well. Yeah. But well, I, I think it just goes to show how high we are in the Chargers this year potentially. Yeah, I think they're going to be really, really, really good this year. I actually made a $10 bet on them to win the Super Bowl. So, I mean, I don't know if they're the favorites to win the Super Bowl, but I really like the odds for it compared to where they were on the line. So, you know, if they do win, I like the payout a lot. Well, a lot of their losses last year came down to the injuries on the defense. So if their defense can stay healthy um, and then also some of their mismanagement um, coaching decisions uh, and timeouts and all that stuff. So hopefully that can kind of with the new coaching staff that's um, and the Joey Bosa coming back and all those guys coming back. Hopefully they can have a really good season. I don't, I don't think that's a crazy bet, Chris. I like it. But I'll jump in now to my um, first favorite. And this is a guy who used to be a fantasy darling. Um, everybody, he this was a guy he was taking. I think he had to be taken in the top three picks for the last, like, feels like decade. But it's probably only been like five or six years. Um, and last year, beginning of the year, he was on that trajectory everyone loved him i loved him i had him on my team and then his quarterback went down with a gruesome ankle injury and then it all went downhill and everybody just started selling him and everyone was panicking even though he wasn't even that bad but he wasn't an rb like high-end rb1 like he was before and that's ezekiel elliott and now there is some concern there right is Dak going to be fully healthy was is Dak as long as you insert Dak into that offense is their offense going to be as good as it was before the offensive line isn't as good as it used to be um, but Ezekiel Elliott is going like in the 10 range right now because of running oh, yeah. backs. Because everyone is so sour on him because of what, how last year ended. I mean, I, I mean, the rankings I'm looking at right now, he's behind no offense to Austin Eckler, but he's behind Austin Eckler. He's behind Cam Akers. He's behind, uh, Aaron Jones. He's right around the same range as like Chris Carson, Joe Mixon, Nick Chubb. Chubb. He's behind Jonathan Taylor. I mean, I think that's just way too low for a guy like Zeke, yeah. especially for, because of how good he was to start last year with Dak. 
Um, and I think if as long as Dak stays healthy, as long as Zeke stays healthy, I mean, even if he is like a mid tier RB one or like a low high end RB one, um, and isn't like that top three guy used to be, if you can draft him in like that as RB ten range. I mean, go ahead and do it because if you take him as like in that RB ten range, that means you also probably got like a really good receiver or a really good tight end, and then you have Zeke as your RB one. I mean, that's a really really good team, I think. So, um, I love Zeke right now where he's being drafted at. Um, potentially, maybe as we kind of drift away from twenty twenty, um, maybe people will not be so biased because of how bad last year was, and maybe he'll his ADP will rise a little bit, but. Um, yeah, I, I love Zeke. I love where he's getting drafted right now. I, I'm all in on him. Um, because even like last year, even when Dak went down, he what I know everyone's like, oh, Tony Pollard's better than him. Give me a break. Um, <laughs> he's not, uh, and he wasn't, he like, he was still, he wasn't awful. He wasn't RB1, like high end, like he used to be, but he wasn't awful. So I, I love him. He's a big favorite for me this going into this year. He's still relatively young. Um, and yeah, I think if, if you have the opportunity to take him, if you have like that ninth or 10th pick or, you have the eleventh or twelfth pick on that wraparound. Um, I would smash draft him for sure because I think the upside is definitely there. Yeah, Drew, I'll get into this one first because I think you hit a home run with this one, man. I am absolutely in love with Zeke, even more to more than I am Austin Eckler this year. I think he's going to be. I'm going to give you a bull. I might be higher than him on you are, dude. I mean, I think this is going to be a bold take. I think he is going to be better than every single running back not named Christian McCaffrey and Dalvin Cook this year. I'd take him. I would take him. I don't know if I would take him over Saquon, but I think he's going to finish higher. That, I, I, just, I don't disagree. I mean, he could be better than Kamara, yeah. Saquon. I think he's going to be better than he Kamara. Be I think he's going to be better than Henry with the new with their offense being back intact. I think he's going to be better than Taylor Chubb and then even Eckler by a little bit. The only guy I would say maybe I would draft over him is Saquon for the upside, but I think Zeke's going to finish higher than him. I, I really do. I think with the retooled offensive line having Dak back with uh, – I mean, Zeke was like the RB2 or 3 when – Dak was still in, and then, I mean, he still wasn't even scoring that many touchdowns either. This was mostly just on volume and, you know, catching some passes. So if, if you're able to get back in the end zone some more times, you know, 12 to 15 times, he, damn, he can finish as the RB1, man. This offense is going to be really good. And I see a kind of a common trend between me and Drew's picks here as well. We both pick guys that are in, you know, really high-powered offenses, the running backs for these offenses. They both catch a lot of passes. They both maybe struggled a little bit last year, you know, Zeke with the you know, Zeke battled through a couple injuries at the end of the year. He also had Andy Dalton as his quarterback. And then Eckler struggled with, you know, the hamstring injury, really fluky injury that he had. And when he came back, he was really solid. But people don't really remember that because, you know, he, he burned a lot of people by missing 10 weeks or whatever it was. But, you know, Zeke, like you said, where he's at right now at the end of the first round, if you can smash, I mean, I don't think you could be happier leaving a I don't think I could be happier leaving a draft and smashing the draft button on Zeke and then right back to Austin Eckler with the next pick if you get that last pick in the first round. If that's somehow what ends up happening during draft day, I will probably just leave the draft after that and just go cry because I think that is literally the, the my f- favorite possible start you could have to a draft. I, I will say, speaking on last year, um, he did leave a sour taste in everyone's mouth. Uh, and don't kid yourself, Drew. He was pretty awful once Dak got hurt. However, I think the pure essence of him back will uh, raise his stature quite a bit. And what I project to happen in terms of him being drafted, like you mentioned, his ADP is not nearly as high as where it could have been. Um, if you're drafting early, as many people did last year, you'll probably get him pretty cheap, maybe at late first, early second. However, if you're drafting a week before the season, you might have to pay up for him, either get him third, fourth overall, something like that. Um I think people are going to realize, hey, he's back to where he used to be. Uh, he's not a scrub anymore. He has his quarterback. He'll be high powered as usual. And you have to pay up. So I guess it all matters about timing of when you draft him, how late can you get him by the dip, as many people refer to as. But yeah, I don't see why he can't be, get back to where he used to be. Um, maybe, maybe if Dak gets hurt, if he misses a game, then you might have those lulls in, in the schedule. But um, overall, I think Zeke can be exactly where he used to be, um, kind of disregarding his whole 2020 season. Um, he, I think he has the high expectations still. I, I don't think it's unfair to put those expectations on him now that they have uh, Dak back. Yeah, that's definitely you definitely have the high expectations. But I just want to bring up that, I mean, I don't want to forget completely about last year. And, and this is in a positive way because I don't, I honestly don't 
give a flying crap what he did in after week five last year because they didn't have Dak. I really don't care because, yeah. you know, at the first five weeks, he scored 27, 22, 17, 19, 23 in his first five games. And the last game was with Dak playing like a half of the game. And also had his three of his four high, highest target totals of the year in those first five games. He had 11 in week three. And then he also had eight in week four and seven in week two. So if you look at that, he only had 10 targets and then he had six targets in one other game. So he had two other games above six targets all year, but three in the first five weeks. I'm all in on Zeke. I absolutely love this pick, Drew. I think he's going to be an absolute stud this year. And another guy that I see being drafted lower than should be, but that has the chance to finish as the RB1. I'm not saying he's going to. Similarly to Eckler, I don't think it's going to happen. I think the probability is pretty low, but both guys have a shot with the, with that offense, with their talent. I think they both have a shot to be the RB one. Yeah. And okay. So I'm not disregarding. He was not great. He was the RB one last year without deck, but so he had the five weeks that were under 10 that everybody was panicking about that weren't good. Two of those games though, were against Washington who was an awesome defense. One of those games was against Pittsburgh, another often awesome defense. And then he also missed one game of injury. But he also had 19 points, 13 points, 17 points, and 15 points in PPR, which is not, again, it's not like, hey, that's like a top three running back. Like, that's not what he was last year. But the fact that he was able to still kind of be a high-end RB2, low-end RB1 without his starting quarterback, I think that deserves some sort of merit. It's also, I think it's also worth noting, too, that this is a full off season for Mike McCarthy. I know we like to clown on him all the time, and he's a bad coach and whatever. But now they actually have an actual offseason, they'll have an actual training camp. They can maybe get some more offensive things worked out. Um, and I think I, I think it's just a it's gonna be a big year for Zeke. Um, and even if it isn't, I, I love I mean, who cares? Take him with I mean, don't, not, not who cares, right? It's your, your first round pick. But um, if he's there, I mean like Chris said, there's so much upside, there's so much potential there. Um, yeah, and even even if you took him third or fourth overall over guys like maybe Derrick Henry or Kamara or whatever, I don't think that's crazy either. He's only twenty five. Can we believe? Can we just? It feels like he's like 30, 33, 35. Doesn't feel like he's been around the league forever. He's only twenty five. Yeah. It's insane. But yeah, so I love Zeke. He was the big one that I wanted to bring up, um, just because I think everyone's everyone's sleeping on him so much. But big time. Um, the uh, the other guy that I want to bring up is a guy coming off injury. Um, and he's a quarterback cause I am, it's a quarterback driven league. I love quarterbacks. Um, and I really should award, I have a Jersey for this guy. I should have wore it today. I wasn't thinking straight. I wanted to rep Jared Goff today for some reason, but he's a quarterback coming off an injury. He was really good to start his rookie season last year. Um, and everybody was like, yes, yes, yes. And then he got hurt. Everyone kind of forgot about him. And then everyone started just going nuts about Justin Herbert cause he was amazing. But he was a pretty good fantasy viable quarterback last year when healthy. And I'm talking about Joe Burrow. And do I think he's going to be like the, the QB one, a top five QB? I don't really think that. But he is going like super, super low in drafts, at least based on the rankings I've seen. He's going around guys like Tua, like Trevor Lawrence, who I think Trevor Lawrence is going to be awesome, but he's also like, he's unproven. Baker Mayfield, Tannehill too, which I also think he's a nice steal there too if you – Another maybe potential favorite there. Um, but he's going like behind like Aaron Rodgers. He might not even play. Who knows? Tom Brady, can he keep it up? He's he's older. I love Tom, but who knows? Um, Deshaun Wat I mean Deshaun Watson's got his own stuff. Matt Ryan, Kirk Cousins, um, Jalen Hurts. Like there's a lot of guys that Burrow is going way below. And I think if you do what I think we all all the three of us like to do and, and wait on your quarterback, Joe Burrow is probably gonna be there and he could be like a really nice steal for you. I mean I know I like to talk about this maybe a little too much and like to pat myself on the back a little bit much, but Aaron Rodgers last year, um, he dropped way, way low in the drafts and I snagged him super late. And then he ended up being like a top five quarterback. Is Joe Burrow going to be that this year? I don't know, but um, he's got Jamar Chase there now. He's still got T Higgins. Joe Mixon will hopefully be healthy the full year. Um, I think he could have a really nice season and the way he's being drafted, super, super low. He's a big favorite for me. Um, and yeah, I think he's, if you miss out on one of those top, top guys and you decide to wait on your quarterback, I think Burrow, Burrow and Tannehill, if I can kind of cheat a little bit, I think Burrow and Tannehill, those like next tier of guys, if you wait, they're both are probably going to be available there. And I think if you take them, you're going to be really happy. You could even maybe get both of them too, if you want to get two quarterbacks. Um, but yeah, I think Burrow is a great pick. I'm a little biased possibly because I do have him on my dynasty team. So if he does have a great season, it's awesome for me. 
Um, but yeah, I, I was kind of shocked to be honest that Burrow was going um, as as low as he was. And maybe it was just the rankings I was looking at, but um, yeah, I think Burrow would be a huge pick. Yeah, uh, Drew. I, I I'm not really I'm not sure which rankings you're looking at, but what I'm seeing him, he's going in the ninth round, and 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 he's and he's a lot. He's going earlier than guys. I mean, he's, he you're right about Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence is going a little higher than him, but I mean Baker Mayfield, Stafford, Ryan, Cousins, Wentz, Tannehill, uh, Hertz, and Tom Brady all are going after him, and and the and multiple ADPs that I am looking at right now. So. Just for the me, ones I was looking at then. Must have been. But, <laughs> I mean, look, Joe Burrow, do I think he can be a top I, – I do disagree with you a little bit on this. Do I think he can be a top 12 quarterback? Absolutely. He's definitely got the upside. I mean, getting Jamar Chase, get back, him come uh, – you know, Joe Mixon coming back from injury, a little bit of an improvement on the offensive line. I think that he can have a pretty good season. But I'm a little bit worried that he's not going to be able – I think to be – you know, where he is, he's going to have to rush for, you know, 350, 400 yards. And normally healthy Joe Burrow, that seems like an absolutely achievable goal that he could sleep through and get and get that 350, 400 yards, you know, add three or four touchdowns. But he's coming off of an absolutely devastating injury. So I am – I am very worried that he's not going to be running the ball very much at all. And and he had a lot of games last year where he was only passing for one or zero touchdowns uh, besides when he played the Browns, which he absolutely lit them up when he played them. But uh, So I'm a little bit worried about that week-to-week consistency you're going to get from Burrow if he's not running the ball like I think he – you know, healthy Burrow can give you that 40 yards and an occasional touchdown rushing baseline that really, you know, helps him out. But if he doesn't have that this year – I'm a little bit worried, man. I, I, I'm a little bit worried. And I think he's going a little earlier than what you were looking at. So I, I do disagree with you, but I see the potential. And I think that his ADP isn't totally reflective of where he's going to go in certain drafts. I think when, you know, you know, you have those friends leagues like ours show up, I think some people are going to forget about him. He, he could end up falling to those double digit rounds where I'd be okay. Having him as my quarterback one for sure. So I don't totally disagree with you, but I will say I'm a, I'm a little bit lower on this name. Not the same agreement as I had with Zeke. They, uh, if I do, if I can say one more thing too, they do have a easier schedule because they obviously were last place last year. I mean, they're playing Jacksonville, true. No offense, guys. They are playing the Lions. They're playing uh, the uh, the Raiders. They got the Broncos. Who who knows about them? They got the um, the Chiefs. Who their defense? It looks better now, but they don't have a great defense. Um, they got some games on there that could be nice. And he's got at least I'm based on what I'm looking at right now. Um, they have a kind of stretch there where they're playing some early on in the season where they're playing some weak pass defenses. Um, and if that's the case, he could be a guy. This is kind of I'm kind of pivoting a little, little bit. But he could be a guy you draft him, have him have a huge monster first half, and then you trade him for something else. Um, and then, because he does play some tough defenses too, like Pittsburgh, San Francisco, the Chargers that we just talked about earlier. So that's another potential. But um, yeah, I guess it was just the rankings I was looking at. He was super low. And I was like, man, why is this guy so low? But um, if he is going higher, I guess that makes a little more sense. Yeah, I would just say if he is going low, it'll probably just be chalking up to the injury concerns. I mean, a few months ago, we didn't even know if he would even start the season. So I guess that's a fair concern. I would just say if you will get, if you do get Burrow, uh, definitely find a contingency plan. So don't just draft him as your only quarterback, whether he's healthy or not, just because I do think he could be a little inconsistent to start the year. But um, besides that, I, I don't have a problem with your choice at all. Um, will he blow out, uh, break out? like uh, Herbert and Tua did, and as he was kind of projected to do for the rest of the year. Um, he could, I mean, but um, like you said, it's just a matter of schedule, momentum, all that stuff. Um, playing from behind, maybe most of the games could help him out if he's throwing the ball a little more. Um, but yeah, like you said, I mean, I, I don't have a problem taking him. He, he probably won't go. Like you said, he'll probably go with the mid rounds early at earliest. So um, definitely not a bad option as we all like to draft quarterback late. So Definitely a guy I will target, but a guy I'm not um, – I'm not going to draft him early or three rounds earlier just to have him on my team. Right. I agree yeah. with that, Roman. Um, I think, yeah, I, yeah, I agree with that too. Yeah. So get to my second uh, fantasy player that I like. It, it is another quarterback. However, so, you know, none of you have mentioned him, and I think he's going to go much later than the quarterback, the group of quarterbacks that you brought up. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Miss, old Mr. Reliable. Uh, for Washington this year, they he, there's no QB competition at all. Whether it's Heineke, it's definitely going to be Fitzpatrick for sure. He's going to have some of the best weapons he might have had in a while. 
and he'll be the starter for most of the year, uh, barring an injury. Whereas last year, you get you can start him for the first half of the year, and then he was basically useless once they put into a, um, which was very controversial as we kind of debated about last year as well. This year, however, I do think he'll start the year off pretty hot, as he kind of always does. Will he have some lulls in the schedule? Probably. But he has a great defense that will help, help him um, at least stay on the field a little more. Um, like like I mentioned, great weapons um, in McLaurin and, and company and uh, Curtis Samuel as well. So I do think he'll be a great value, a diamond in the rough. He'll go much later than uh, the Joe Burrow, the Tom Brady, Ryan Tannehill, Baker Mayfield. I do think he'll go much later than that. Um, but, Drew, as you kind of applaud yourself for taking Aaron Rodgers last year pretty late, I think many fantasy championship teams could be – hinged on a guy like Brian Fitzpatrick who they draft very late in the draft. So um, definitely I, I love, he has on, he's on my dynasty team, not to brag a little bit, but um, definitely a guy that I will target if I don't have a quarterback going into the double digit rounds for sure. Yeah. Roman, I really like this call because this guy is basically a free square on your roster. I mean, he's, he's going in the 19th round from the ADP I see right now. So this is basically an undrafted player that you could grab in the last round, or you could even scoop off the waiver wire. But I think Fitzmagic has upside as well. I think, just like Burrow, I think he can finish inside the top 12. I mean, this is a guy that is is a willing runner. He'll probably give you, you know, two, 300 yards rushing with a few touchdowns. But he's also got, for the first time in a while, he's got, I mean, he's got full job security, in my opinion. I think he's definitely going to start mm-hmm. all 16 games, barring injury. And I think 17. that he's 17, my apologies. But uh, <laughs> I also think that he has one of the best, I think he has a very underrated weapon in wide receiver room. I mean, he's got. Antonio Gibson out of the backfield, who I think is going to catch more passes this year. He's scary Terry McLaurin, who's at an absolute alpha one. He's got Curtis Samuel coming. He's got Diami Brown, also a rookie that is very exciting. And then he also has Logan Thomas, who's a serviceable pass catcher at the tight end position. I think this is a skill position room that has a lot of talent around it. The only concerns I would say would be the offensive line isn't great, and then the defense is also going to be really good. So maybe he won't be – you can make the argument. I'd, I'd say that you that maybe he won't be asked to do as much, but you don't sign Ryan Fitzpatrick if you don't want him to air the ball down the field. They'll take those 50-50 shots, those F, F it, I'm, th- I'm going deep shots that sometimes are picks, but sometimes, you know, Terry McLaurin will probably moss a, a DB and run it in for an 80-yard touchdown. I, I like Fitzpatrick, I would say, more than Burrow. Maybe not. I wouldn't rank him higher, but I like him more because he's basically a free square on your board. You could take him as your second quarterback. You could even take him as your QB one if you feel that confident in him. And you're going to get some big, big weeks because he was a QB one when he started last season. So I, I definitely like that pick, Roman. Yeah, Chris, I'm glad you mentioned um, how good their defense was. Is that what, how, do you, how good the Washington defense is? Because that was something I was also going to say um, just because the – they they could be up a lot, or they might not need to you know air it all air it out. But also last year Miami had a pretty good defense too for the most part of the year, um, and they still were able to air it, it out for the most part. So um, and and just looking at his stats from last year, um, there were two games. Obviously he missed a lot of the season because Tua started um, the most majority of the second half of the year. Um, he had two games in that mix as well where he played under 100 percent, under 90 percent of the snap percentages, and he didn't have a great showing there, but. In each game where he had at least 90% of the snaps, um, he only had under 21 points once, and that was week one against the Patriots where he had, he, had, he only had four points. But every other week he was 28, 29, 21, 33, 22, 22. I mean, this is a guy that's awesome. And it's like you said, Roman and Chris, too. Um, this is a guy where you can draft him like super, super late, or you can just um, sign him as an undrafted free agent. Uh, I he mean, shouldn't go undrafted, that's for sure. Yeah. Exactly. And even like look at last year with Alex Smith, who was playing on one leg, his stats too, he had like 10 to 17 points for really every week. And if you have a guy like Fitzpatrick, who is obviously, I think they're around the same age, if I'm not mistaken, but he's healthier. Um, he should easily get, you know, 17 to 25 points week in and week out. He, um, he is, there is some concern there with the consistency. I know last year he had a really good year, but years past, he can get, he can be pretty streaky, um, which is a little bit concerning. But if you're taking him, Basically for free, I mean, go ahead and do it. Um, I would probably advise just getting another guy. Don't have him be like your QB one and just forget about it. Um, but if you get like you load up on the other positions and then you wait and get like Fitzpatrick, um, you could get another decent guy too, like a like a Jared Goff, like another guy who could be a decent 
uh, quarterback option um, that's late in drafts. Carson Wentz, maybe Daniel Jones. Um, I think you can have a serviceable QB duo with Fitzpatrick possibly maybe being the 1A um, and still be a really successful fantasy team, as long, especially if you really you know, load up at those running back, wide receiver, and tight end positions. Wait on quarterback, get a guy like Fitzpatrick. Um, I think it's it's awesome. I 100% agree with the uh, with the take there, Roman. Yeah, no, those are definitely. Uh, I like. I do like bringing up a couple quarterbacks here because these are guys that you can pick in the late rounds. Obviously, I I gave you my opinion that I like Fitzmagic over Burrow in terms of his draft position. I would rather have Burrow independent of the draft price, but I think Fitzmagic's obviously going to go a lot later. And then. I'll get into my last name. It is not another quarterback. I do have one on my list. It's Ryan Tannehill, but I don't want to. I'm not going to do him. Another guy that I'll, I like I'll give too. an. Yeah, I think he's going to be really good this year. Another guy that I'll give an honorable mention to, and I, I would have said this guy had you not brought up Zeke, but I don't want to get into another Cowboys player. That's Amari Cooper. I think he's going to be awesome this year. The guy I'm going to get into is is a player that I'm very much on record saying that I am a huge fan of him. Uh, I'm a huge fan of his price right now at the receiver position. I think he's going to be really, really good this year in, in uh, you know, an offense without a lot of moving pieces, and that's Deontay Johnson. This guy's going in the late 10th round right now, almost the 11th round on the ADP. I'm looking at you see at the 10.09 in a 10-team league. So this guy, I mean, he's basically free, man. I mean, that's that's us. I mean, double-digit rounds. I mean, this is basically where Joe – he's going after Joe Burrow, man. Come on. Like, I mean, give me a break. This guy was – a top 20 receiver last year, uh, despite getting injured in like 15, what it felt like 15 different games. He had almost a thousand yards despite big Ben, not having either knee working after like the week three and his arm also couldn't throw more than four yards down the field. I think Deontay Johnson is, I think he's got a chance to be a wide receiver one this year, man. I'm going to go that far. I know that he has competition for targets. Juju Smith Schuster, Chase Claypool also bring in Najee Harris, maybe gives him a little bit more competition for targets. But he had both Juju and Claypool last year, and he was absolutely fine. He was more than fine. He was a really solid option last year. I mean, finishing, you know, as a top, I think he was in probably the top 25 in a full PPR. Solid numbers for Deontay last year. And people really like to rip him for all the drops he had last year. The guy had, you know, Less, he had a, a lower drop percentage than Jerry Judy. A uh, low, I believe, a lower drop percentage than DK Metcalf. And I, I'm blanking on the third name I was going to bring up, but there was another guy as well that people are like, "Oh, this guy is sure hands." But oh, CD Lamb, that's the other guy. CD Lamb, he had, he also had a lower drop percentage than CD Lamb. So I think that is one of the most overblown stats in the NFL. The fact that Deontay Johnson had like one or two weeks where he forgot to catch the ball. I don't think that's reflective of his entire season or his entire career. I think he's a guy with sure hands, a guy that you can rely on. He's got that Antonio Brown role on this team. I know Big Ben is not the same player he used to be, but he also messed both his knees up early in the season last year and was coming off an elbow surgery. I think he's going to be able to throw the ball at least a little bit better this year, and he's going to be looking for his number one receiver, and that's Deontay Johnson. So a guy that I am absolutely all in on this year and with his draft price. I mean, I take him in the sixth round, man. I'm not kidding. I mean, this is, I mean, the other guy I was possibly going to bring up was Cortland Sutton going, you know, in the seventh, eighth round ish. I would take Deontay Johnson over Cortland Sutton personally. And, and that Sutton's coming off a major injury. He's got a crappier quarterback as well. So I, I would take Deontay over him, but both names guys, I think are, you know, six ish round picks that you can get, a lot later and just I'll be getting Deontay Johnson in our draft because no one's going to be willing to take him in, you know, the seventh, eighth round. I'm going to take him the seventh, eighth round. If, if you want to take him, you're going to have to, you're going to have to move up pretty far to do it. So uh, he'll with almost without a shred of doubt be on my team, unless someone just feels like, you know, they, they woke up, you know, just mad at me or something like that. I, I don't know. I don't know how I wouldn't get him because I'm going to take him earlier, way earlier than where his ADP shows right now. I just think he's going to be a stud this year. Yeah, you've been hyping up Deontay for quite a while now. Um, but like you mentioned, I think Ben Roethlisberger might be the biggest deterrent in terms of not drafting him because um, I don't think he'll be you know that big of a difference um, from compared, compared to last year regardless of the injury. Um, but like you said, he should be the RB1. I mean, obviously, Juju did not have the great season last year, so maybe him bouncing back could you know have some effect um, on Deontay as well. But overall, I mean, he's clearly the best wide receiver on the team regardless of – what you know they want to use him as uh and like you said you might be taking him over his adp uh, i'm sure that might be a more common thing by the time we get close to the season but 
he's definitely maybe a, a surefire lock, I guess you could say, compared to some of the other guys he's going around. Um, and like and like you said, well, you didn't mention it, but even with Najee Harris on the field, I do think he'll take him a while to get settled in as an RB1, even though there's no competition for him. And I guess during that span, we'll really see what kind of wide receiver uh, Deontay is and how you know good he, be, he can become uh, and see if he's living up to the hype that we all have him to be. Yeah, Roman, you took a lot of my my points. Um, <laughs> Roethlisberger, I think, is the biggest factor there. Um, you mentioned there, Chris. He he was playing with like no legs and no arm, and he was he was hurt most of last year. Um, but I mean, he's it's probably not going to get better this year, which is definitely a concern um, for Deontay's you know fantasy success. And then also with with Najee Harris too. Um, if they end up running the ball a lot, if they're really kind of just wanting to play like smash mouth football because they also have a good defense. They might not throw the ball as much um, if Najee is as good as I know we all think he's going to be. Um, so that is somewhat concerning for Deontay's prospects. And also, I know you mentioned, obviously, last year wasn't a big deal. But they do have, um, uh, they obviously, have Eric Ebron, who is a massive you know, target uh, target share guy. I'm just kidding. Uh, but they have Pat Fryermuth, uh, Baby Brock, probably going to get some uh, targets. Uh, they drafted him, I think, in the second or third round in the draft. So that he's obviously a guy they want to include in the offense. And then they have, obviously, Claypool and, and Juju. Um, so that is somewhat concerning. Obviously, we didn't, we didn't deter, deter him that much last year. Oh, that's something to keep in mind. But like you said, with his ADP being as low as it is, um, he's got way more upside than any other guy you can take in that spot. So I, I do overall like the pick. Um, and yeah, I know last year he was kind of, I think he had concussion problems. Um, but when he was playing, I mean, he had, he consistently had like over 14 points, several times eclipsing 20 points um throughout last season um, yeah. even with ben banged up a lot so um as long as ben can stay somewhat healthy um and uh the offensive line i know that they allow new changes there if that can stay um you know good for the most part they don't run the ball too much um deontay can have a good season but i think like to kind of conclude everything um i think regardless where he's being drafted at it's definitely worth the risk for sure yeah and and i mean I, I definitely get what you're saying. You guys are saying about this, but I mean, uh, I actually just saw the stat yesterday. Uh, Benny Snell and James Cotter combined it for like, I think it was like 290 carries and over a thousand yards last year. So if Najee, Najee's going to take everything, but he, I think he's going to be around that range as well. Yeah. Maybe they'll run the ball a little bit more, but that, that offensive line is going to be trash again this year. And they're going to have to, big Ben's going to have to get the ball out quick again. I don't think clay Claypool is the guy that, I mean, I don't have him on my least favorites and I hope I'm not spoiling anybody's pick, but I'm extreme. I have no interest in drafting him this year. I, I don't think he, he's the big play guy. They're not going to have an offensive line. So I don't think he's going to be, he's going to be extremely volatile. I see him being like that Hollywood Brown where you'd never know if you, you could always start him in hopes for a long play, but, you're never going to feel confident starting. I think Juju and Deontay are going to be the guys that get the ball the most. And, and Deontay is clearly a better receiver than Juju Smith-Schuster. Gets open way more successfully. He's the guy on the outside. The Antonio. I'm not saying he's Antonio Brown, but he plays that role like Antonio Brown, where he's a guy that can create separation at all three levels. And I think he's going to do that yet again this year, regardless of Najee Harris coming in. I think, honestly, that could help him score some more touchdowns potentially. So I'm all in on Deontay. I think he's going to be a top 20 receiver, clearly. And he's not being drafted as one right now. I mean, I mean, it's just it, it kind of it kind of blows my mind, man. But I I think that eighty people probably correct itself, so maybe I won't be quite as in on where his price goes up to. But as of right now, I am all in. And then I'll jump into my next name, which is another receiver, and this is a guy that I think I've also been pretty out on this year. And this is absolutely only due to really draft price. I love the player. I think he's one of the most talented young receivers in the league, but. Come on, man. We're not drafting this dude at the 205. This is an absolute joke. It's DK Metcalf. There's no way I am wasting a second round pick on DK Metcalf. Like this guy, yes, is he a really good is he a really good receiver? Oh yeah, without a doubt. But there's no way I'm taking him in the same range that Austin Eckler and Stephon Diggs and DeAndre Hopkins, even AJ Brown, Justin Jefferson going after him. There's probably 10 to 15 running backs in that range that I would rather have than him. It's just it's just not gonna happen, man. He was an absolute beast in the first half of last season. No, without a doubt, this guy was an, one of the best players in fantasy football through the first, you know, 10, 11 weeks. But he, in the second half, absolutely fell apart. I mean, he only had one game. He had a couple games where he he was really good, and the rest of the 
I mean, he was scoring with 10, 12, 13 points. He had a couple of five, a five, a four, a nine. Just no consistency whatsoever. Ended up finishing as the wide receiver five because of that awesome first half of the season. He was actually the wide receiver seven in PPR. My apologies. But he ended up finishing there despite which, – which is a good finish despite, you know, having a really bad, you know, end of the season. But I just think a lot of what he did in the first half was, you know, it was just Russ being on fire. Russ really fell apart at the end of the year. Uh, they, they've talked – all they've talked about all offseason is run the football, run the football, run the football. And I just don't think that there's enough to go around for both DK Met- – honestly, I'm not really in on Tyler Lockett either at his price. I don't really think he's going to be that good either this year. And it's mostly just volatility with these two guys. You never know. One of them will probably score a touchdown every week, but you have no idea which one's going to do it. You have no idea if they're – I mean, one of them could get four targets in the week. The other one could get 12. And it's just not – I'm not willing to give up a second-round pick, a mid – not even a late second round. This is a mid-second round pick that you have to pay up to get DK Metcalf. And that just – I have zero interest in that when guys like – Roman brings up freaking, I mean, Amari Cooper, a guy that I brought up, Keenan Allen. I'd much rather have Keenan Allen. I mean, I'd, like I said, I'd rather have him. I'd, I'd take Amari Cooper straight up I, in the rankings. I think he's going to finish higher this year. So just I, I think DK is more of that wide receiver too. Like I'd be willing to take him, you know, the fourth, fifth round. Like I'd, I'm just not that – like where Lockett's going, I would I would take DK, you know, maybe, maybe late third potentially with for some upside. But it's just not the guy I'm going to waste the second-round pick on, and I'm not going to lose on, on banking on, a, on an offense with a low passing volume. So I am – it's not the player that I'm out on. It's the offense. It's the ADP. I'm very out on DK Metcalf. I will not have him anywhere. So, no yeah, I, I agree. And I'm kind of disappointed because he was one of my guys I was going to bring up was DK Metcalf. Um, so yeah, I guess you you and I were kind of in lockstep on the favorites with with Zeke, and now we're in lockstep here with the least favorites with DK. But yeah, everything you mentioned, he was obviously a monster um, to start the year last year, similar to, similar to Russell Wilson. Um, I think Russell Wilson's another guy you could maybe bring up as a as a least favorite guy. Um, sorry if I'm spoiling it for anybody, but. Um, his ADP is also pretty up there for quarterbacks, and he was obviously a beast to start the year, and then he did nothing in the second half of the season. Uh, and as you said, Chris, too, he's uh, Seahawks are going to be probably running the ball more, most likely, at least if you believe what they're saying in the offseason. Um, and yeah, DK being taken ahead of guys, like we mentioned earlier, like Keenan Allen, um, uh, even Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, uh, Cooper Cup, uh, Calvin Ridley, though. I, I know my rankings are kind of jank, uh, apparently, but um based on the things i looked up he's going ahead of guys way ahead of guys like keenan allen calvin ridley allen robinson terry mclaurin um, even guys like godwin and mike evans who i think maybe are a little bit better than than dk at least based on the adp especially so um him being taken as a borderline first round pick um, i think is ridiculous and i correct me if i'm wrong chris but i believe you traded him um and made like a monster deal and got a pretty decent haul for him um last year at fantasy league which was out ended up being a really good move um, because of uh, how he, how much he fell off um, yeah. by the end of the year. So, um, yeah, I, I again, I think he's a great player. I think if he if he drops and you take him in like the fourth or fifth round, like you're saying, Chris, obviously, yeah, awesome. If he's if he's your wide receiver too, awesome. But if he if you're counting on him to be potentially like a first round pick, like your best player on your team, that's that's a no go. And that's where he's getting drafted in a lot of leagues. So yeah, um, yeah, hundred exactly. percent agree with this. Um, I'm disappointed that you stole mine, but I'm kind of happy because there's another guy I wanted to talk about too. Um, so now I can talk about him now. But Roman, did you have anything to add on on DK? Yeah, absolutely no chance of taking him as my wide receiver one. And just to talk about volatile players in general, I don't think we need to shy away from them, but only when their ADP is completely outrageous, like yeah. like Metcalf's is. Um, he'll put up those great games that you would expect from wide receiver one, and then the next week come out and have a dud week. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, like you mentioned, Chris and Drew, I, I completely agree with you guys. Um, not a guy I'm actively targeting, but if he somehow fell into my lap in the third, fourth round, I wouldn't complain at all. Yeah, look, and before, all right, I see, I, I do disagree with you guys a little bit. I would absolutely take DK Metcalf as my wide receiver one, no complaints, but I'm not doing it in the second round, man. Like, this is after me taking three stud running backs. If he's there in the fourth round, oh, I have absolutely – I mean, maybe maybe if Amari Cooper's still on the board, I would I would obviously take him over. But if, if you know, the guys – because he's still probably in my, you know, top 10 to 15, I am absolutely fine having the volatility as my wide receiver one because he's going to give you those big weeks. You just have to draft, you know, a safer player like a Robert Woods behind him, a Deontay Johnson, a Chris Godwin, 
even like a C.D. Lamb or a Julio Jones. You probably want to draft one of those guys as your wide receiver, too, if you're going to take DK as your one. But if you're going to do it in the second round, I think that's committing, you know, a, a major crime in your draft, and I think you're going to regret it. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's disagreeing with what Roman and I were saying. Either. Right. I think I might be speaking for Roman, but uh, I think yeah, I'm agreeing with that too. If you get like some studs at running back, and then you have DK as your wide receiver one, okay. But if he's like your first or second best player on your on the yes, team, yes, that's a problem. Um, that's Major a major problem. problem. Yeah, exactly. Yes, I 100 exactly. agree. Yeah, um, but yeah, Roman, if you want to jump in now to your your first least favorite guy here. Yeah, this is a guy I've talked about a lot pretty much in the past couple of months, um, but I will reiterate uh, Josh Jacobs. I'm just not a fan of him. You know, we've talked about him. Oh, whether you can get him as a RB3, that'd be great. I'm not banking on him falling that far enough to be an, a running back three on my team. Um, so I might just completely disregard him in general. And like for the like for the reasons I said before, Kenyon Drake, I mean, we don't, we don't like Kenyon Drake at all, but I mean, he will take out part of that offense. And I just think he'll take away from Josh Jacobs as well. And um, if Josh Jacobs is on his own, obviously no problem with him. I think he'd be a second round more round pick. Um, he's still going pretty early for all that considered. And I'm just not willing to take the risk. And I'm not banking on him falling, like I mentioned. So it's just a guy that I'm kind of out on in general. See, look, I, I agree with you, Roman. I don't. I, Josh Jacobs clearly is not the same player, or he's not going to be the same fantasy level player that he has been for. I mean, he had, really has been kind of underwhelming in general, in my opinion. Even last year, I think he was really hard to trust as your like in you know RB one or two. I thought he was kind of annoying, but his ADPs crept down in the early fourth round. I don't mind that ADP at all, actually. If you need a running back, I mean, if I go running back, say I get the second pick in the draft. If I if I go four running backs in a row to start the draft, which is a strategy in a double flex league that I am absolutely willing to do, just smash four running backs in a row. If Josh Jacobs is my RB four, I will be ecstatic because I think that is a fantastic value if you're getting him in the fourth round. I think I've risen a little bit. I've re risen. I had Jacobs in my least favorites, but then I looked at his ADP and realized it crept from you know the third ish round to the fourth round, yeah, and weird. I am. Wait, spending a fourth round pick on a guy that I mean, he's been a guy that's ran for a thousand yards both seasons. He's a guy that can find has a nose for the end zone. He just needs to start catching a few more passes here and there, which I he I think he's capable of doing. So I I'm willing to draft him now. I, I am. I'm not in love with him, and it's still a guy that I probably will avoid in most situations because he'll probably be you know uh, another. I'll look at some running backs in that range. You know, I mean Najee if he's in the fourth round, I'm obviously taking Najee over him. Chris Carson, a guy that's going behind him. I will absolutely take him over Josh Jacobs, no questions asked. So a couple of those guys in that range, I am more than willing to take over Jacobs. But if he's there and he's the best running back on the board in the fourth round, I have no problem taking him there. But but somebody in your league may reach on him, and his ADP I've seen is kind of – I've looked at another ADP. It was a little bit higher you know, in the, in the 30s. I'm not willing to do that. But if you 40 and out, I'm absolutely willing to do that. Yeah, I, I agree with both of you guys. I think if you're taking him as your RB one first or second round, like he had, he was last year, and I think maybe not the year before that, but especially last year, um, I'm out on him. But if he drops and you're taking him as like your RB two, I, I think Roman, you said you wouldn't like him as your RB two. I wouldn't mind him as an RB two because Kenyon Drake was hurt a lot last year. Um, there is a chance that he goes down with another injury, and then Jacobs is able to get a lot of the load, uh, which would be a, obviously a steal. Um, and I, that's why I honestly, I think that kind of incorporates it in too. I think that's why he's worth a pick there. If you're taking him in the, in the second or third round, um, absolutely. So, or not the second or third round, but if he drops a little bit, um, and you're taking him as your RB two or your RB three, um, I, I would love it, but yeah, definitely not like last year where he was the low end first round pick high end second round pick. He's not there anymore, unfortunately, cause they signed Kenyon Drake. Um, but, uh, he's definitely, definitely worth the pick. Cause I do think he still has some RB one upside. Um, if a couple injuries or maybe maybe we're all overestimating the Kenyon Drake edition. Um, yes, and it turns definitely. out and they don't even use him. He's more just like a decoy, uh, which is a, a definite possibility as well. So, um, yeah, we'll have to kind of wait and see. But, yeah, overall, I, I do agree with the pick um, there, Roman. Um, but I, I do think I, I think I'm more in agreement with you, Chris, where I think it's still worth the risk if he drops yeah. in that you know third to fifth round um, range, which I think is very yeah. possible based on some ADPs. Um, but yeah, so I'll, I'll go into my, um, least favorite here. Um, it might be somewhat controversial cause this is a guy who is 
In some leagues, I looked at is like the first. He's like the first wide receiver off the board. If he's not the first, he's at least the second or third guy um, off the board. And it comes down to really the uncertainty at the quarterback position. And uh, it, it comes down to the uncertainty at the quarterback position for this guy's team, as well as how much depth there is at the wide receiver position. And then it's kind of similar to what we were saying with DK, but not to that extent. Um, if you're taking a guy with your first round pick or your your second round pick, if you kind of have that wraparound, which is, this is the range this guy goes in, um, I want like a legit option. There's not a lot of question marks. And this guy, Devontae Adams, has a lot of question marks. Um, he's already talking about, I saw a quote earlier today, he, how he wants to play with Derek Carr because they played a k- college together, which, okay, that's cool, bro. Um, but I, I know he's saying all the right things to the media for the most part, um, how, you know, he's here, you, you know, he's came from what I think he said he came from, like, poverty, and he's here to, you know, make his paycheck, and he signed a contract, and he's playing football, and he loves to play football, blah, blah, blah. But the fact of the matter is if Aaron Rodgers isn't there and Jordan Love's there, Jordan Love could be the second coming of Patrick Mahomes, like many people think he is, or he could be the next Paxton Lynch. And if he's the next Paxton Lynch, Devontae, it's a disaster for your fantasy team and the season's over, basically. Um, if he's your first round pick, and that's if you want Devontae Adams, you're probably gonna have to spend a first round pick on him if you miss out on that, like those first group of running backs. And I'm just personally, I'm just not willing to do that. Um, I would much rather have um Tyreek Hill, obviously, Diggs, um, even AJ Brown, Hopkins. Honestly, I mean, this might be shocking. If Aaron Rodgers comes out tomorrow and says, hey, I'm playing, I'm all in on Green Bay, then absolutely, Devontae's worth a first-round pick, high-end second-round pick. But with all that uncertainty there, I might even take a guy like Justin Jefferson or Amari Cooper because I just think there's more certainty there with, with Devontae. But if he drops, like say you have like the 1-1 and you get to your 2-10 and 3-1 pick and Devontae's still there, I would say take him for sure because I think he's still going to be a dynamic player. Um, but I just I'm out on spending a first round or high end second round pick on him just because of the uncertainty. So that might be a controversial take, but that's just kind of where I'm at because of all the uncertainty there. No, I mean, I think this is I don't have a ton of analysis for this. He's going at the 109 right now, but it's as simple as this. I mean, if Aaron Rodgers is there, you draft him and, you know, I mean, I'm not going to draft him the first round because I don't waste I don't waste first round picks on wide receivers. I take running yeah. backs or second round picks on wide receivers I take running backs so I won't be taking him no matter what almost but if you do I have no problem with someone who wants a stud wide receiver in the first round I think that's a perfectly valid strategy it's not something I use but you know if if Rodgers is there he's worth the first round pick if he's not there I'm yeah I mean I'd even go further than than you said I'm not I'd move him all the way down. I mean I'd take Keenan Allen I'd take Allen Robinson I'd take Amari Cooper I'd take Scary Terry I'd probably take AJ Brown over him I mean, I would take all those guys over him if, I mean, he'd probably move outside my top 10 wide receivers if Jordan Love is there because of the uncertainty. They also have Aaron Jones. He'll probably, honestly, I think Aaron Jones, may, I don't know if he'd get a boost, but I think he'd get the ball more if Jordan Love ends up coming in because they'd be more reliant on the running game. So I think that Devontae Adams without Aaron Rodgers is, a, is an absolute no draft for me pretty much. With Aaron Rodgers, I mean, I'm still kind of in the camp of, like I said, don't take wide receivers in the first round. Take running backs. There's not that many of them. You can get wide receivers in the fourth through sixth round and be perfectly fine. Yeah. But if you want that stud wide receiver that you know is going to get a lot of volume, if Aaron Rodgers is there, Devontae Adams is clearly probably him or Tyreek Hill are in the discussion for the wide receiver one at the position. But without him, probably wide receiver 10-ish. Yeah, I would hope we know closer to the year what that situation is looking like so fantasy owners can know what they're expecting when they go into the draft. Um, but other than that, it's pretty simple. Like you guys mentioned, if Aaron Rodgers is there, probably not. If he's, if he is there, go for it. Um, however, I would just say like, regardless of whether Rodgers is there or not, Adams is the wide receiver one. So you're getting a wide receiver one, no matter what. Um, so I don't think he'll be, uh, he might be a bust for a first round pick. However, I don't think it's going to be completely a lost cause. Although there's much more uncertainty than there, when there would be as, as much as you would like in a first round pick, but um, I don't think you can throw his season out the window for sure if, if Rodgers is not there. Like you said, Chris, I'm out on him as a first-round pick because I'd probably be out on him as a first-round pick even if Aaron Rodgers was there. Um, but I just, like you said, I I'm just don't love taking a wide receiver with your first-round pick. Um, however, um, I also agree with you, Roman. I think he is a second- to third-round pick. Low-end, second, high-end, third-round pick if Rodgers isn't there. Um, but there's just a lot of risk there. There's a lot of risk there. 
But if you're a guy who loves taking or a fantasy player that loves taking wide receivers with your first round pick, um, I, maybe it's worth the risk for you. Who knows? But like we saw last year with Michael Thomas, you took a receiver with your first round pick and then it crashed and burned. So hopefully it won't be that bad because um, it seems like Devontae is a pretty good dude off the field. I mean, the same could maybe be safe for, said from MT. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I, I just, there's so much uncertainty there and I just don't, don't love that at all, especially with the ADP where it's like nine at the lowest, it feels like. So, um, but I will hop in now to my next, um, least favorite player. Um, and this is a guy who I did not jump in on the criticism that Chris kind of mentioned to kind of start the show. I think it was your first favorite. And this guy got brought up because I knew I was going to bring him up here for the least favorites. And that's Mr. Alvin Kamara. Now this could um, come back and backfire me uh, like it did last season when I took, I was like, do I take Clyde Edwards Lair or Alvin Kamara? And I, of course, it shows I'm going to take Clyde Edwards Lair. <laughs> yeah, and then too. Kamara went off. Um, so that sucks. That might, it might again come back to haunt me. But um, if you look at just his, his stats last season, when Drew Brees was not playing, I mean, they weren't great. I mean, yeah, he was a monster when Drew Brees was playing. Um, and again, it's weird cause Breeze was like, um, like a shell of his former self, but he was so dynamic cause he loved those dump offs and then Kamara would just run and take off, and especially in PPR leagues. That's awesome. But I mean, down the stretch, I mean, obviously had 56 points there when Drew Breeze came back, um, at the end of the season, but he had that those few games where Breeze was out, I mean, he had 10 points, six points, 17 points, um, which isn't awful. Um, but when you're taking him as like the second or third overall pick, I mean, that's tough. That's tough. Um, if he drops a little bit, I don't think he's going to. But if he drops somehow to like the low end of the first round, high end second round, by all means, take it. But I'm just out on him. I'm taking him with potentially the first overall pick, the second overall pick, the third overall pick. Those high end picks, um, I would much rather take guys like Zeke, like Saquon, like Dalvin, like uh, McCaffrey, um, just because. Like we saw last year, he he was some issues there when Drew Brees wasn't playing, um, and we just there's there's a lot of unknowns there with that quarterback position, how that offense is going to look, um, and he also like also Chris mentioned before, two years ago he was not good. I think three years ago even he wasn't great, um, and then his rookie year obviously he was a monster. So um, this is a guy. It sucks because I know he's a big advocate for NASCAR, and as a NASCAR fan, I love this guy, um, but with his ADP, I, I don't I don't love it. Um, and I'm just kind of, I know Roman, I know you have him on your team, so I know I'm, this is not calling you out by any means, but, um, I'm just, I, I don't love him. And for really many of the reasons that Chris mentioned earlier, um, there's just a lot of uncertainty there and he's going so, so high. Uh, I just, I don't, I don't love that at all. Yeah. I just, I don't know, man. I, it's, I a hundred percent agree with Drew. I didn't have him in my least favorites list. But he was definitely a guy I considered, and obviously I talked about Eckler being a guy that I think can finish ahead of him. I, similar to you, agree that I think Kamara is going to be. He's just, he's not gonna. I mean, he's not scoring twenty one touchdowns again this year. It's yeah. just it's flat out not gonna happen. Michael Thomas was hurt all last year. Nobody else scored touchdowns for the Saints team. It's gonna happen. It's not gonna be the same situation as last year. It's it's gonna be a lot more spread out. And if he's not getting that many touchdowns, which I mean, he, if he still gets you know 15, 16 touchdowns, he's gonna be awesome. But I I think he's gonna regress back down to that you know, ten to fifteen range. And he doesn't get as many rushing yards as some of the other guys. I don't think he's gonna catch quite as many passes as last year. So I'm. I'm expecting a little bit, you know, RB5, RB6, but I think potentially the, the chances are there that he finishes, you know, even outside the top 10. I think it's a possibility for sure. And if that happens where he's being drafted, which is basically the third pick in the draft, that is a massive draft bust. You are not winning a championship if you draft Kamara at three and he finishes, you know, around 10, which is what he did two years ago, remind you of that. I know he, he had the ankle injury, so it's not all his fault, but... He still really wasn't that good throughout the season. He, he had a lot of sh touchdown struggles as well. So just a guy that I'm not really willing to invest that third overall pick. And like I said, I mean, it's going to be – that's a pick I really don't want as a third overall pick because I'm not going to take Kamara yeah. there, but I feel like I'm going to be reaching on the guy I really want, which is Zeke. And so I'd probably end up taking Derrick Henry or Saquon Barkley, which I'd rather have Zeke than both of them. But – I'd feel the peer pressure of taking, honestly, I'm just going to take Zeke at the third pick, man. I don't even care. I'm just going to reach on Zeke because I think he's going to be good this year. So that that's what I'm going to do if I get the third overall pick this year, I guess, because I don't really know what else to do. And I kind of see Kamara. I mean, Saquon's got risk. Henry's got the, the risk of, you know, his, at some point he's going to get injured. It's going to happen. I'm not predicting an injury for Henry, but 
at some point, this guy is it's, the wheels are going to come off quickly for Henry when they, and when they do, he's going to be a, someone's going to be left holding the bag. And I don't really want it to be me Camara. I don't think he's washed at all. I just think this offense is going to take, uh, it's going to be, I don't know if take a step back is the right answer, but I just think it's going to be really tough to predict when he's going to be good. Yeah, um, like you, like Drew said, he is on my fantasy team, so I might be more advocating advocating for him than you two. And like I mentioned, uh, well, in our tier list, I was the one saying he should be high up in the elite tier. Um, him, Kamara, the player is good, um, but like you guys are kind of mentioning, the situation he's in, the team this year might not allow him to be as good as he was before. And similar to Drew last year, I was faced with the decision of Clyde or Kamara. Um, I was the fifth overall pick, so maybe this year I would I would feel much more comfortable taking Kamara at five. I don't think I would take him at three or four. Um, five, six, I would be perfectly fine doing so. I do think he finishes in the top ten. Um, like you guys mentioned, uh, new quarterback, Michael Thomas is back. Um, so it, it could very well be different. However, I don't think he's a bust. I, I think he'll be worth a first-round pick, obviously. Um yeah, if Zeke jumps over him in terms of who's being drafted, I, I wouldn't bat an eye towards it. I completely understand it. Um, but five, six, maybe even four overall, I I wouldn't, you know, I don't think that's abnormal. I think that's perfectly fine. And although last year the main concern was his contract situation, that's why he was kind of dropping a little bit. Yeah. Um, this year, he'll, I mean, you don't, you don't really have a reason why he would drop, maybe just because of those concerns that you mentioned. Nothing super obvious going on with him, though. Um, so he will go in the first round, no question about it. So whether it's three or six, I think you're getting kind of the same player. Uh, but just a matter of the situation around him is what's kind of uncertain at this point. If I, I will play devil's advocate real quick, and then we can hop into your second least favorite there, Roman. Um, first, kind of like Chris, you kind of mentioned a little bit, there's question marks across the board there. Even Christian McCaffrey and Dalvin Cook, they both... Dalvin Cook was pretty healthy last year, but McCaffrey, he's got injury history in the past. McCaffrey was hurt most of last year. Sam Darnold's the quarterback there. And then all those other guys, too, have a bunch of question marks as well. Um, and Kamara's, his clear question mark is how, because he didn't do great without Drew Brees. So how is he going to look like with a new quarterback there? And he could be awesome. He could be the RB1. Who knows? Um, but he could also fall flat on his face. But that's the, that's the truth for all those running backs in that top 10, um, I think, for the most part. So um, there is some help there and also um, there's also some maybe some solace in the fact that I said the same thing about Derrick Henry a year ago and Aaron Jones too there's no way they can repeat what they did in 2019 and then what they do they, re they repeated it in 2020 so there's very very possible Kamara could do the same thing um, in 2021 but uh, just with that ADP I, I don't love it and I definitely would rather take like Chris said chances on Zeke McCaffrey Cook even I'm even think I would take a chance on Saquon and even Derrick Henry over over Kamara um if I'm making that and also Austin Eckler too. But um yeah, I, he's not he's a guy I don't like that much, um, based on that ADP. But overall, like you said, Roman, he's still a great, great football player. But I'll let you jump in now to your second least favorite. Yeah, it seems like both of you are taking your big shots on these guys that you like or hey, I'm kind of being a little safe with it, a little tame. Um, I'm gonna go with another quarterback. This player has been getting a lot of hype this year. I don't know how it reflects in the rankings because I didn't really look at the rankings when making my picks, but uh, Cam Newton, I just want to bring him up really quickly. Uh, I do think he has a lot of good weapons on his team, so I definitely could be better. However, he's in his 30s. I know, Drew, you're looking at me kind of angrily, apparently. But, you know, I he could be better, but I, I just don't – I just not really feeling – I'm not feeling the hype about it, although it's very um, deserving, I guess, of the hype he's getting. Of course, when you bring in two of the best tight end free agents, um, you get him some more weapons around the team. He could be a lot better, and he's getting a full offseason. We've advocated for the reasons he can bounce back. I mean, I've it came out of my own mouth why I think he could be better. However, in fantasy purposes, I'm not targeting him, nor will I be. You know, uh, even if he was in the late rounds, I I wouldn't. I would still be targeting other guys like Joe Burrow, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Tannehill. All those guys are kind of grouped into Cam Newton. I feel like Cam Newton's going before those guys, so I'm perfectly fine passing on him. Um, for what's available later on, um, so maybe that's not maybe that's more like not too bu bizarre of a pick. But overall, I'm just not feeling the hype. I'm, I'm not like super excited if he was on my team. And overall, I just he could be very well good, and I just don't really want a part of him this year. 
Any Here, chance you want to? Any chance you want to pick another player? Because this dude's this dude is currently ranked the thirty second quarterback on a, in terms of ADP. Like he's I'm, going uh, basically undrafted. I mean, I don't I don't really know who's hyping him up. Like man. I, I, like I mentioned, I did not look at these rankings when taking when making uh, consideration. However, he he was getting a lot of hype. That's absolutely correct. So I don't know what what I think Matt happened. Jones has been getting all the hype, man. Yeah, well, that's, that's gonna a, take that, over this year. That's absolutely correct. So between you know between when we first talked about him and how like when those free agency was going on, people were hyping him up. So maybe since then, I, apparently he's gone down in, in hype and in, in the rankings. So. I guess it depends on what rankings people are looking at or what you're judging by. But overall, I do think people will draft him. I don't think it's that's not going to be a question. But overall, I think you can get much better value if you will go for a late round quarterback. Uh, yeah, think- a, 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 as we established before, my rankings are kind of jank a little bit. I guess based on the ones I looked at, but I, I do I have seen what Roman's talking about. I have seen some people hyping Cam up. Oh, he could be a late round steal. Um, I don't. I haven't seen him going ahead of guys like Joe Burrow or even in that range. Um, it seems like he's much more in that like Fitzpatrick golf range. Um, so I wouldn't mind just taking like a flyer on him because it's seen, everything that's coming out of the Patriots camp is like it's a QB battle. It's not Max team yet. So and he was kind of fantasy relevant a little bit there for a hot second to start the year. Um, but yeah, I, I do think uh, like you said, though, you admitted it at the top. You are going a little more tame with these picks than maybe Chris and I were. Um, but yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't think you're going to have to reach on Cam. I think there's many possibilities that he just goes straight up undrafted or goes super, super late. Um, but there is also a chance that he goes. I remember I was in a fantasy league a little bit ago, and he, like last year, even I think he was taken relatively high, um, like in like early on. So there's a chance because on name value alone, he goes high. Um, but I, I would say he's probably going to go late enough. Um, and even if he is there, I, I would still probably take Fitzpatrick, Darnold. Went Big Ben, Derek yeah. Carr, even Big Ben too. I would probably take him over Cam. Well, maybe um, it was just a low hanging fruit, but I just feel like yeah, I had to mention him. I, from my perspective, I thought he was getting a pretty much considerably amount of hype. Not enough hype where he'd go middle rounds, but a hype where people would say, oh, he's not as bad as what people think he would be. I think he was. But then yeah. to Chris's point, then there was those training camp videos of Matt him Jones, like yeah. overthrowing receiver after receiver. And then people were kind of like, maybe Cam's done. And then you had Mac throwing dimes. Um, so, yeah. Well, in, so, case there's any, in case there's any last minute uh, consideration, I just want to put it to put it to bed that I'm not in on Cam Newton this year. There we go. All right. Now we have that on record. That's good. I, but, and honestly, I made my face because I thought we were doing favorites for some reason in my brain. And I was having flashbacks to Adrian Peterson <laughs> last year when you were super oh, hyped on him. Um, and I was like, why are you hype on Cam Newton? Okay, so it makes a little more sense, but uh, yeah, I don't, it's definitely not one of your hottest takes. Right? I'm sorry to offend I you, Chris. Yeah, I I just don't really know why we're bringing him up, man. I'm not going to lie. I disagree with Drew. I don't really see any, I mean, this dude's not going to get drafted anywhere, man. He's, he's, he may not even start at the beginning of the year. He's just, maybe. I, I see when, when, when I made my list of players, I wanted to take players that like, like I, people are like, like, I mean, DK Metcalf's a guy that people really like, really like he's going early. Same with Alvin Kamara. Um, and the next guy I'm about to bring up as well. Um, a couple other guys I have my list. I'll, I'll say mine. Cause I was gonna, uh, because I'm the last pick Kyle Pitts was one of the ones I thought of, but his ADP hasn't quite risen to the level I thought it was going to. So I, it's like the fourth, fifth round. I might be willing to take a shot on him there, but I'm I'm still thinking he's going to creep into the third round. At that price, no interest. And then this is probably my coldest take out of either list would be the backfield of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Travis Etienne, James Robinson, don't draft either one of them. You can thank me later. Um, Agreed. Just stay away from them. There's no upside unless, there. Unless, unless Travis Etienne is actually a receiver now, and he's now a receiver, and James Robinson still gets all those carries. But I it's not going to... They're just going to... He's working out there. I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, sorry. Continue. I, I get what you're saying with that, but I just don't think James Robinson has any upside anymore. Uh, regardless unless he gets of traded. Price. I, I, unless you're yeah, trying to get traded. True. If he gets traded, then Dynasty, I'm still okay holding him right now, but not in a, not in a redraft. Let's see the situation play out first. But the guy I'm gonna bring up, and this is this might be the exact opposite of Cam Newton, uh, a Cam Newton prediction. This is much more in par, on par with Drew's running back pick. It's another guy that has been mentioned on the show that I would take over. I would take Eckler over this guy. It's Jonathan Taylor, second year player. 
Um, you know, obviously Taylor JT had a very good stretch down the end of the year last year, almost ran for 2000 or 1,200 yards, had 11 touchdowns, actually had a decent amount of targets too, as well. Ended up with 36 receptions, but I think this year he's going to take a step back in my opinion. I, this was against a lot, maybe not a step back. I think is not, that's not the right term I should use. It's more of like, he's going to be underwhelming for the draft price. He's going with the 106 right now. I think that is a little bit too high. I think he should be a second round pick personally because you know he he struggled early in the year. Uh, obviously he picked it up at the end of the year. The 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 home stretch was a pretty pretty easy schedule for him. So that had something to do with I think they did start giving him the ball a little more, a little bit of a change of offensive philosophy. So I, I do like that part of his game. I think he is going to score a pretty good amount of rushing touchdowns. I think he's just a Derrick Henry light, in my opinion. I don't think he's going to catch. I think he's honestly going to get, you know, 30 targets at most because they have Naeem Hines. He's going to take a lot of targets. Carson Wentz, like I mentioned earlier, already can't throw the ball out of the backfield. One of the worst dump off quarterbacks in the league. I mean, I don't know if you remember that Miles Sanders play last year against the Browns, where basically just tossed the ball up and the guy on the Browns had a punt return for a touchdown, basically. And it was maybe the, one of the worst interceptions I've ever seen in my life. But I think, uh, you know, he's going to struggle getting those guys the ball out of the backfield. Taylor, when he gets the ball, is going to do something magical with it. But I think he's going to struggle to get those targets that he needs to in a full PPR to get to that. Because you're drafting him to the point where he needs to basically be a borderline, if not top five running back. And that's how he's being drafted right now at the RB. It's RB6. So he's right outside the top five. You need him to be that good. You have no margin for error. And I think that's probably around what his upside is, you know, the rb Four probably is where I would cap his upside at. When you're drafting him at the RB6, I think the downside is a lot higher than the upside, I guess. So th that's just kind of my opinion on Jonathan Taylor. It's not the player that I dislike. It's, you know, kind of the situation with Carson Wentz coming in with them having other running backs. Marlon Mack being back didn't even mention that. He's probably going to get a at least a little bit of work. So I I'm a little bit lower on Jonathan Taylor. If he's in the second round, I have absolutely no problems drafting him. But I think he belongs more in, you know, that – Nick Chubb, Cam Akers, Aaron Jones, uh, you know, Antonio Gibson tier, somewhere in that mix, I think is probably where he belongs versus being an early to mid first round pick. Yeah, if you do take Jonathan Taylor as a first round pick, you might not see those dividends until maybe the end of the year for the reasons you mentioned, Chris. So it might just be worth it to be a little bit more patient with him. If he falls in the second, absolutely smash it. Um, but like you said, Chris, you much, you are higher on guys like Eckler, Zeke. So if they creep up into the first round, you'll see guys like, uh, Taylor and, and maybe even Devontae Adams, the reasons you mentioned drew fall out of the first round. So definitely possible with the natural like, ebb and flows of, of the league in fantasy football. Yeah. I 125% agree with this take. He, Taylor was my other backup option. If someone stole my other guy. Um, so yeah, Taylor, again, if he falls in the second round, um, Absolutely, like Roman said, smash draft him. But um, I mean, there's some leagues where he's going ahead of like Nick Chubb, and I just don't, I don't see that happening. Um, it, it could happen. Who knows? It could happen. Um, but yeah, based on what we saw last year, I think him being a high end first round pick is just a little, a little aggressive. And we all got burned last year when we were like, oh, let's take Clyde in the first round, and hopefully that doesn't happen yeah. again with Taylor here this year. But um, definitely, de I would say probably the riskiest. Um, first round pick that you could take. I, I would say that's even Taylor's even riskier than Kamara, than Devante. I think that's a very, very risky first round pick. Um, that's why I'm definitely out on him taking him in the first round. And I don't really completely understand. Like, he's a good player, but I don't understand why instantly we were like, okay, now he's a first round pick. I don't, yeah, don't really I know. get that. Um, it just doesn't make any sense to me. But hey, who knows? They do have a really good offensive line there. For sure, in Indiana. Yeah, definitely, and and like, look to reinforce your point. Like, why why is he him and Cam Akers have very similar? Yeah. And I'm not, I I do look kind of like Cam Akers ADP. It's why I didn't make him a least favorite. I'm a little bit lower than him in the, than the consensus, but I do kind of like where his ADP is. It's like late second round, so I think that's a really good spot for him. I don't get why he's going late second round when he had basically the identical season as Jonathan Taylor and honestly was a little bit better in the playoffs as well. So I mean, very similar season for both guys, and I. I just don't really, I just don't really get it. And I think yeah, you would have been very disappointed in Jonathan Taylor had Marlon Mack stayed healthy last year. I think it would have been just a totally split backfield. Jonathan Taylor would have been a guy you just absolutely could never trust. And I know drew, you had him on your team for a little while. I'm sure that was frustrating for most of the season. I had him for a couple of weeks as well. And it wasn't the most fun thing I've ever done in my life. So <laughs> while Jonathan Taylor, I definitely see his talent and I see the upside that he has. If he, I mean, he could be, 
like I said, a low end Derrick Henry is what I could kind of see him being. But like where you're getting him in the draft, I mean, I just don't really I'm not willing to invest that that draft capital. I'd much rather get Zeke, Austin Eckler, even maybe Nick Chubb. These are all guys that are going yeah. behind him. So I I mean, there's I mean, maybe I'd even take Joe Mixon over him, man. And this guy's a second round pick. I'd rather have Joe Mixon than him. He's gonna get the passing volume and he's gonna get a probably more rushing volume than him as well. So I, I would I would take him over. And it, this is a hot take actually as well. And it's a guy I didn't bring up, another guy that I really like. I think I would take Najee Najee Harris over Jonathan Taylor. I'm really in on Najee Harris. I think he's going to be awesome this year as well. A guy that I meant to bring up as one of my favorites, but it was a guy that just I, – I wanted to talk about Eckler, and I didn't want to do two running backs. So I, I decided to go with Deontay Johnson instead, another Pittsburgh player. And, and also, I know he, he did good down the stretch, but the coaching staff did not completely trust Jonathan Taylor. And that was what was super frustrating for yeah. me. Is there'd be some times where he just wouldn't get a carry in the second half, or he would just be non-existent, or he'd you know savor the day because he got like a, like a one-yard gain for a touchdown. That was his day. And yeah, fantasy-wise, it wasn't awful because he got that touchdown. But when you look at his carries, it wasn't great. Um, and I think the Marlon Mack returning is a huge th- storyline that's going very underrated right now. I think the coaching staff likes him. I think he's. It wouldn't surprise me if he steals some carries. Um, and even I'm not even saying I would take these guys I'm about to mention over Jonathan Taylor, but there's no reason why like Antonio Gibson, DeAndre Swift, even J.K. Dobbins are as like that far beneath Jonathan Taylor. Like they're like second, third, potentially even fourth round picks. And the fact that J.T. is like three rounds better than those guys, I'm not saying he's not better than those guys, but the fact that he's that much better than those guys. I just don't agree with even like Clyde Edwards Alaire. Like, I don't even think he's that much better than him, to be honest. I, it just doesn't make any right. sense. I, I don't really get why we just anointed him as the next, uh, the next big name running back to emerge in the first round. It doesn't make a ton of sense. Uh, but Hey, I've been wrong before. He could be really good. Uh, Carson Wentz adds a new element to the offense. The O-line's still really good. So there's a chance he is worth that first round pick, but I just, I don't really understand the hype around him. Um, it just doesn't make any sense to me. When there are guys that I feel like you could take later in the draft that could give you just as much as, as JT could, like Gibson, like Najee, like uh, CEH, a lot of Dobbins. guys there. So yeah. Dobbins, too. Yeah, who knows? Because um, Dobbins and Swift both really came on the second half of the year, too, just like JT does, but both him, both those guys are, are both like second, third, fourth round picks. Um, and JT is like a top five pick, like Chris said. So I think I think this might be my favorite guy to not draft of every guy we brought up, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, so yeah, I 100 percent agree. Uh, but yeah, does anybody else um, have any like honorable mention guys that they didn't get off their chest they want to mention here before we get out of here? Um, no, I think that's pretty much it for my for my list. I'll let uh, Roman if you got any if you got any other backup quarterbacks you want to bring up, feel free to do that. T- Taylor Heineke, not you're not drafting him either. No, I'm not drafting Taylor Heineke, but no, I'm I'm good. Um, I, I do have a few other favorites. Um, I think Sam Darnold, I think, could be a potential steal there. If you're believing all the training camp that he's amazing, who knows? But he's going pretty low, pretty undrafted. He could be a, a nice steal. Uh, CEH, I've mentioned him a few times, Clyde Edwards-Alaire. I think we're all kind of clouded by how he burned all of us. But if you can take him as your RB2, potentially even RB3, I think he's a huge steal. Uh, CD Lamb, I know, Chris, you mentioned Amari Cooper earlier. Um, I think I would take CD Lamb for many of the same reasons I would take Amari Cooper. Yeah. And then my other favorite, too, I think you mentioned him too earlier, Chris, Logan Thomas. I think if you wait on a tight end, I know we mentioned him previously um, in other episodes, but if you wait on a tight end and you take him, um, you can have him as your tight end one. I think be really good. For many of the reasons Roman mentioned why Brian Fitzpatrick could really add a new element to that offense, um, I think Logan Thomas could really reap the benefits to that. But I wanted to mention those few guys because I think they're all um, really good picks that you could take there um, in your drafts. But um, if no one has anything else they want to add, um, this was a really fun episode to do. Um, and yeah, once again, we are the Zone Defense Podcast. Um, we'll have plenty of other offseason content, um, including um, additional fantasy football rankings. We're going to do a fantasy, another fantasy mock draft here probably pretty soon. And we'll also start our division previews probably in late July uh, for the 2021 NFL season. Um, Chris and I are continuing to uh, cover the NBA playoffs through our zone defense basketball hours. Um, so it's the Suns and Clippers series is pretty good. Hawks Bucks is even better. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting back there and talking about that, talking about that with Chris. 
Um, so make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Spotify and Twitter at Zone Defense Pod, and search us on Apple Podcasts so you don't miss any of that awesome comment. Um, smash that like button, and especially for this episode, drop a comment down below. We talked about a lot of different controversial topics here today about guys we would draft, guys we wouldn't draft. So please leave a comment down below. Let us know what you thought about all of our takes, um, those you agree with, especially those that you disagree with. Um, and we love reading those comments and trying to respond to them as quickly as we can. But that'll do it for this episode. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Peace. See ya. Thank you.